Hi, hi, hello, and welcome back, everybody, to Wolf Tales. Last time we had a very eventful morning whenever Fudiu and Mirati tried to save me from my truck. <laughs> oh, that was a good episode. <laughs> oh, man, this game is so good. I enjoy it quite a bit. All right, moving on. Whew. All right, girls, I'm back. I have enough canned food to last for three winters, even taking into account food to use appetite, I say. I also bought a new map and some rechargeable batteries for the radio. Who wants to help me unload the truck, I ask. Preferably without attacking it, I think to myself. Girls, I ask. I enter the cabin, surprised to find it both quiet and empty. As I walk through the cabin, I soon hear the sound of someone talking, though I cannot make out what they're saying. Girls, I ask? That's why I'm telling you we need to go now, says Furuyu. What do you think's going to happen if we keep wasting our time here, she asks. Do you think your mother's going to live forever and she's just going to keep on doing your duty for you, asks Furuyu. I, I know it isn't fair to my mother, says Mirati. I know I should return, if only for her sake, but... But what, asks Furuyu. You'd rather hang out here playing housewife to some human, she asks. What's wrong with that, asked Mirati. I like it here, okay? I enjoy human culture far more than our own. There's no hunting or sacrifice on the weak, no fighting over food or warmth or constant power struggles, Mirati says. So why shouldn't I just stay here? What does our pack have to offer that's so special? It isn't about what the pack can offer you, says Fudiyu. It's about what you can offer the pack. Our kin expect you to lead them, just as your father did before you and your mother is doing right now, says Fudiyu. Are you going to let them all down just because of your own selfishness? Why shouldn't I, asked Minerati. I'm sick and tired of being everyone's princess and being held on some... I'm sick and tired of being everyone's princess, says Minerati, and being held on some kind of pedestal because of who my father was. I don't want to be a leader just because everyone keeps saying I'll be the next pack leader. That doesn't make it true, says Mirati. All I want is to live out my days in peace like, like, like a human, she says. Slap. Oh, shit. Things are getting serious. The sound of chatter dies down in an instant. All that can be heard throughout the cabin is the echo of Fudu's palm striking Mirati's cheek. Unsure of whether I should step in or not, I remain frozen on the spot, watching silently to see who will make the first move. I'm... I'm sorry, says Mirati. I'm sorry for your letting you all down like this. But my mind is made up. I will not return to the pack, she says. Fine, says Furuyu. Have it your way, princess. We'll be better off without a selfish human sympathizer like yourself leading us anyways. Furuyu pushes past Mirati and heads for the door. Without saying another word, Mirati rubs her cheek quietly, fright fighting back tears as she tries to remain strong. I'm gonna follow Fudiyu. Talk to her about this. Before she can disappear from my sight, I quickly follow after Fudiyu. Departing from the same door through which I've just entered, Fudiyu runs out into the snow, seemingly without any purpose or direction. She simply runs straight ahead, intent on creating as much distance between herself and Mirati as she can. <laughs> Slow down, would you, I ask? I'm not as athletic as you are. Fuckboy king, says Fudi. What are you... Oh, I get it, she says. The princess couldn't bring herself to face me, so she sent you to do her bidding, is that it? Fudi, initially surprised to see me, quickly adopts an expression of annoyance. Her bid for solitude has failed, and rather than being greeted by the face of her best friend, the one who chases after her is her least favorite human. Nobody sent me anywhere, I say. I just saw you running away from the cabin in tears, so I thought I'd better check up on you. I, I wasn't in tears, says Fudiyu, and if I was, they were righteous tears of anger, she says. Righteous anger, I say. What happened, I ask. Did Ma Minardi refuse to give you seconds for breakfast or something? I play dumb and intentionally provoke food to you, thinking that this way she'll be more likely to slip up and accidentally tell me the truth. Unfortunately, it's none of your business, says food to you. Get lost, human, she says. My plan fails almost immediately. Come on, food to you, don't be like that, I say. Besides, even if you don't tell me, you know that me, it already will. 
Wouldn't you rather have me hear your side of the story, I ask her? Hmm. Why should I care what you hear, asks Furuya. It's not like you'd take my side anyways, she says. You don't know that, I say to her. Try me. I might surprise you. Hmm. Furuya turns away, but doesn't actually refuse. After thinking over my words for a moment, she lets out a sigh, then turns to face me once more. Fine, I'll enlighten you, says Furuya. It may be difficult for a human to understand this, but within the pack, everyone has their own role and responsibility. For some of us, that is gathering food, for others it's building shelter. In Mirati's case, it is her duty to lead us, says Furuya. She must protect us from harm, make difficult decisions about our future, and ensure that everyone does their part to help out. Most importantly, it is up to our leader to solve any disputes which arise, she continues. They must put an end to any bickering and quell unrest within the pack before it becomes a problem, Furuyu says. Are you with me so far, fuckboy king, she asks. Yes, I say. I understand what you're saying. Make decisions, keep everyone in their place, and stop infighting. Typical leadership, I say. Good. I'm glad this isn't too difficult for you, says Furuyu. Now, given the responsibilities of a leader, what do you think would happen if our leader suddenly abandoned us, says Furuyu. A new leader would be chosen, I ask? A new leader would take the position by force, says Furuyu. Democracy has never worked for my kind. At the end of the day, whoever is the strongest will attempt to seize control, with or without the support of the pack. In the best case scenario, they take over without a fight and everybody accepts their new leader right away. If they don't, or if more than one person puts their hand up, there's a power struggle, says Furuyu. They want to be leaders, kill one another, or if they don't want to fight, they take their own followers and form their own pack. Either way, the pack loses its power, it's reduced in size, possibly fragmented, and everyone needs to cover up multiple roles to fill in the gaps. But don't think that's the end of the matter, fuckboy king. What I've just described is simply the beginning. I unconsciously gulp as I try to take in everything that Furuyu has just told me. Honestly, I'm surprised Mirati's assertion is beginning to sound far more serious than I thought. I can now see why Furuyu is so serious about bringing Mirati back home with her. Wow, I say. That's quite a lot to process. I never thought that Mirati's disappearance would have such a profound impact, I say. Well, now you understand, says Furuyu. Can I count on you to give Mirati a push in the right direction when the time comes? I'm going to be straight up with her. Sorry, Furuyu, but even knowing of your situation, I'm not going to do that, I say. Mirati's decision is hers alone. I won't influence it any more than I already have. If she'd rather live in solitude than return to her pack, then I won't try to tell her not to. Do you really think that Mirati would be okay like this, asks Furuyu. Huh? I ask. What do you mean, like what? You know, out here all alone living like you do, says Furuyu. The princess may say she wants to separate from the pack, but do you think she's really capable of it, asks Furuyu. Ah, so you're talking about Mirati's well-being rather than that of the pack, I say. No, I can't say that I think Mirati would be suited for the life of a loner. It takes a great deal of strength, both physically and mentally, to live on your own, far removed from society. I may not know Minari as well as you do, but personally, I don't think she could cope. Indeed, says Furuyu, I would believe we are in agreement. The princess's strength lies in how she interacts with others. On her own, she is quite hopeless, says Furuyu. Haha, <laughs> I kind of figured that was the case, I say. Living in solitude isn't for everyone. I agree, says Furuyu. The princess ought to live her life in a safety and comfort surrounded by others. No, not just the princess. I believe that applies to all people, says Furuyu. Everyone? That's a bit of a stretch, I say. I'm actually pretty happy to beat you out here by myself, you know. Are you really, asks Furuyu. Furuyu narrows her gaze as she scrutinizes my face. You say that you're happy out here, but wouldn't you rather be with your friends and family, she asks me. Wouldn't you prefer to make a difference in the lives of others and share in their experiences, asks Furuyu. Well, maybe sometimes, I say. But aren't I already doing what you just suggested? Huh? A smile surfaces on my face as I take the opportunity to share my perspective with Furuyu. You just implied that I should be living with my family because that's the way I would make a difference in the lives of people other than myself, I say. But isn't that exactly what I've been doing out here? 
I don't mean to brag, but a few days ago I saved a life, Mirari's life. If I hadn't been living out here far away from civilization, that girl would have perished in the snow. Furio goes quiet. Even if she doesn't agree with my lifestyle, there's no way she can complain about me saving her friend's life. Anyway, even if I met Mirari, I don't think there's any shame in choosing to live for and by yourself, I say. I came out here because I wanted to get away from everyone, and that's exactly what I've done. So while I personally don't think my lifestyle would work for Mirari, I'm not about to tell her what she can and can't do with her life. Maybe she'll miss everyone and come back. Maybe she'll enjoy living in solitude, I say. Either way, it's Mirari's decision, and whatever she decides, you're just going to have to live with it. I think, says Furuyu, we're going to have to agree to disagree. I can see your point, and you've given me a lot to think about, but at this moment, I cannot accept Mirari's selfishness, says Furuyu. That's fine, I say. If you agree to try and see things her way, then that's all, plenty. And knowing Mirari, it's probably all she ever hoped for, I think to myself. Alright everybody, I'm going to call it here for this episode. As always, I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time for more Wolf Tales.